All right, hello guys, and welcome to my first preliminary winter forecast for the winter of 2019 to 2020. I'm very excited to present this to you guys, but before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe. If you do like weather-related content like this one, I'm going to continue to make updates for this winter and forecast snowstorms as we head into the winter, so I'd highly recommend it. Now, to get things started, we're going to start off with the precipitation forecast. Now, you can see, obviously, there's an area of below average precipitation and an area of above average precipitation. And it's going to all make a lot more sense once we look at the temperature forecast. That's going to be right after this, so stay tuned for that. But we are looking at the West Coast here first off, and you can see that we are expecting below average precipitation, slightly below average. You can see there is a scale system up there on the top of your screen, and there is three different shades. We only get into the first one here, which means that the confidence is pretty moderate but not too high so we're not expecting anything too dry for this area now we are expecting above average precipitation though for the southern united states starting in new mexico headed eastward through texas and into the gulf states as well and then up the east coast as well as into tennessee kentucky ohio and a little bit of michigan there as well we do have a second shade of green there though for the northern portions of Alabama and Georgia up through some of the Smoky Mountains, Appalachian Mountains, into Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, and into interior New England. And this is all because of, again, where the cold air is going to set up. And we're going to head into our temperature forecast now so you can take a better look at that. Now you can see that we do have warmer than average temperatures expected there for the western United States from Washington down through Oregon into California, Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico. Again, this is only the first shade of yellow, so this isn't too extreme. You might not even notice it, but it will be slightly above average as far as temperatures are concerned. Now from the central United States headed eastward, we do have slightly below average temperatures expected in that first shade of blue. That's for the Dakotas, down through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and into some of the Gulf states. And then the east coast as well is only in that first shade of blue. Again, it's going to feel like average to slightly below average in these first shade areas. Now for your second shade, we see that the area is obviously smaller, but it is for the Dakotas down through Kansas again and into some of the northern portions of the Gulf states and then some of those interior regions like the Appalachian Mountains, Ohio, and a little bit of Michigan there as well. And we do get into the third shade here in the below average temperatures, and this is kind of for the Great Lakes states down through Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and into Kentucky as well. This is where I'm expecting far below average temperatures, and this will be very noticeable uh, if, you, if you look back at the winter after it's all said and done, you will notice, you will be like, that was a cold winter. You will feel like that in areas like Chicago, Indianapolis, cities like that. Now, we're going to move on to our snowfall forecast here. And you can see that, again, in the drier regions there for the west coast of the United States, California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, obviously, since we're going to have below average precipitation, we're also going to have below average snowfall for these regions. In areas that do expect snowfall, we will have a little less than you normally get. Now, for the eastern United States, Texas, Oklahoma, eastward, we are expecting above average snowfall due to slightly below average temperatures and above average precipitation. This should lead to above average snowfall, a little bit above average. Again, a lot of these won't be noticeable in the first shade the second shade though from northern alabama northern georgia up the mountain ranges there in the central east coast region of the united states into interior new england i am expecting a a little bit more snowfall than you would normally expect and it, and it should be quite noticeable in these regions as i think this is going to be the main storm track with the colder air being a little bit more centrally located in the united states i think that the trough is a lot of the time going to set up a little bit more interior than it would normally in a cold winter for the east and this is going to lead to a lot of those, those snowstorms heading a little bit more interior and the coastal regions not getting quite as much snow as the interior regions. And that's a lot of what we saw last winter as well. Now we're going to move on to your overall forecast here. And I'm going to break it down region by region, obviously, like I always do. You can see on the West Coast starting out, we have drier than normal conditions that are expected for those tan areas. And then warmer conditions expected for everywhere west of the Rockies. So Nevada, basically all those states west of the Rockies. I don't want to get into it, but Nevada, Oregon, Washington, California, Arizona. Now, in the, the Rocky Mountains, we're expecting average mountain snow. With average temperatures and average precipitation, things should be quite average as far as snowfall is concerned as well. So Idaho, Montana, down through a lot of the southern Rockies as well in, in Colorado and New Mexico alike. Now, 
Headed eastward, we see that purple region there. We're going to start out there. Arctic blasts possible. This is where we're going to see a lot of cold temperatures. Again, the coldest temperatures are going to be around Chicago, Indianapolis, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Kentucky, Illinois, all those areas, Indiana. That's where we're expecting the coldest temperatures this winter as of right now. So Arctic blasts are going to be quite possible in this region. Now we're expecting average lake effect snow for those white regions or the, or the lake effect regions of the United States. We're expecting average lake effect uh, due to the fact that we're expecting a colder than normal fall for these regions, the lakes won't be above average, I don't think, as far as temperatures are. So I think we're going to have a below average to average lake effect year this year. Now, headed south, we see the winter battle zone here in the pink. And what that means is we're expecting ice, snow, all sorts of sloppy storms within this region. You will see a lot of mixed events, probably not fully snow storms for these regions. A lot of them will start out as rain. And then change over to snow. And there will only be a few of them. It's not going to be all winter of, you know, snowstorms for these regions, obviously. But you will see some sloppy storms. Now, south of you guys, we're going to expect cold and wet conditions for this region. Or cool and wet. Because it won't be necessarily freezing for these areas. But it will be pretty moist and pretty cool compared to what you're used to. Now, headed towards the east coast, we can see in this light blue region, some coastal storms are expected for this region. Not necessarily the worst of winter, which is going to stay to your north. We'll talk about that in a second. But in this blue region, we will see a few snowstorms for you guys. Uh, and especially in New England, obviously, I think you'll have average to above average snowfall. So you will get maybe more than a few for some of those more northern areas. But for the southern regions of this blue region, you will get probably two, three, four snowstorms for you guys. Decent snowstorms. So it will be a pretty average to ab slightly above average snowfall season for you guys. Now, worst of winter is going to be expected for Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, interior Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. This is, all again, a lot of what we saw last winter, and I'm seeing some similarities to last winter. It looks a little bit colder with the QBO being in a different phase, and, and that's an oscillation that we look at that really affects the temperatures. So I think that's one of the driving factors that makes me think we will have a little bit of a colder winter this winter than last winter, or actually a lot colder. Uh, as, as well as not having the El Nino present is going to make a, a world's difference, I think, in the temperature forecast. Maybe the cold doesn't set up where I'm saying it's going to set up, but there will be cold uh, and much colder than, than last winter. It could be in the west, could be in the east. I'm really thinking it's going to be in the east due to the PDO and a lot of other factors like that. But I think that this winter overall will be colder than last winter. Now, the worst of winter will set up, I think, in a similar area to last winter, like I was saying before. Interior New England could get, you know, a lot of snow just like they did last year. It was almost historic last winter in interior New England. A lot of snow for you guys, especially Maine, just kept getting snowstorm after snowstorm after snowstorm. It was insane for you guys, and I think it could be another year just like that. I think the coastal regions could get a bit more snow than last winter, but it should be quite similar. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this winter forecast. I'm going to be making multiple updates on this forecast as, you know, we get more information. That's how I've always been with these seasonal forecasts. I'm not afraid to update it, not afraid to change it, um, even if I have to admit that I was wrong in my previous forecast or that I think that there is some inaccuracies. I will go ahead and do that. But I'm going to continue to make updates on this. There will probably be three or four more winter forecasts after this one. Just because, you know, new Jams Tech models coming out and, and different oscillations looking a bit different. I don't think that it will look completely different than this by the end of it, but there might be some tweaks. So I would highly recommend, again, that you subscribe and stay updated for those updates that we're going to be making on this forecast. As well as the fall forecast, make sure to stay up to date with that one because I'm going to be making probably one more update on that one. And that'll be the final fall forecast. And a lot of people don't know, but the fall actually really does you know, affect how the winter is going to be. We do see some correlations between certain types of falls and certain types of winters. They are right next to each other. So obviously we do see some things carry in to the winter time from the fall time. So again, that would be another reason why we do see the fall affect the winter. Or it seems like that at least, but there is going to be more updates on that one. Again, we will be making updates on snowstorms as well as the winter goes on. Lots of snowstorms. Obviously, every winter we have multiple, multiple snowstorms. I'm going to try to forecast every single one, have multiple updates. Lots of new and exciting things happening for this channel. So, again, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, I'd highly recommend it. I know it's my own channel, so obviously I'd highly recommend it. But 
Um, I, I do have lots of new exciting things coming up as well as live streams once my internet gets a little bit better. If you've been in my severe weather live streams, you would know that it has been struggling recently, but but um, I'm hoping to get better internet soon so that we can do more smooth live streams. Anyway, guys, sorry, I just talked a lot about a lot of things coming up for my channel, but I hope that that excites you if you are a subscriber. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.